Today I'm going to take you through a very basic quantitative analysis model that you can execute at home in 10 minutes and the only software you need is Excel. I'll also provide the link where I find all this data where you can download it for free. With all that said, let's get started. Here's the premise that we're going to be testing today. Let's say HL as a stock showed us a volume spike today. Now with that volume spike, the stock ended 2% higher. What are the odds that the stock HAL will again end up higher tomorrow? Or alternatively, let's say HAL had a volume spike, but it ended 2% lower today. What are the odds that it will again end up 2% lower tomorrow? That is what we're going to test today. Let's take 15 seconds to understand quantitative analysis. Hota kya hai, right? So we have two words here, quantitative and analysis. Quantitative refers to data that we're working with numbers and analysis refers to what we do with those numbers. Let's look at them individually. When we say data, what do we mean? Well, the best part is it could be anything. You could be talking about inflation data or just stock price movement. How much higher, how much lower did a stock close? It could be volume, it could be turnover, it could be inflation data, Dow Jones ka data. You pick the data that works for you. And that's the key word here. You have to pick this data. And that comes from the analysis or the second part of this term. So for the case that we have in front of us, this hypothesis, we need to have at least two pieces of data. One is the share movement. Did it go up? Did it go down? How much did it move by? And the second is the turnover or the volume. And that's the data that I've collated here with some extras that come with the data that I downloaded. So I haven't removed them. So you can see the format that you will get the data in. Now, within this data, the things that I need to consider the most are the closing prices, so this tells me if the stock moved higher or lower. Similarly, the data I'll use to judge volume would be turnover instead of shares traded. And this is a question that I'm giving to you guys, right? Why would we use turnover instead of shares traded? Turnover is better, but why? We can answer it in the comments and you get the answer right. Obviously, well, let's say we have a 15 minute call and you can ask me anything you want to ask. Now, coming back to our analysis, with all of this data, we can now go about answering the questions we have at hand. And the first thing I want to do for that is to figure out on what days did I have high volatility. My entire premise starts with that. On days of high volatility, what happens after that? So the first thing I need to do is, of all these 238 pieces of data for this particular year, what were the days when I had volume spikes? Now, in order to figure that out, I need three things. And I promise you've heard of all three of these things. The first is mean, which is the average. The second then is standard deviation. You've heard of it and I'll remind you what it is in a second. And the third is a simple if-else statement, which if you took a basic programming class in standard ninth, let's say, you know what an if-else statement is. And with those three things, we'll get the answer here. In fact, with those three things, we will complete this analysis. So let's see. The first thing I need to do is calculate the mean, because if I don't know what the average turnover is, how can I know when I get a volume spike? So to calculate the average, you have many ways, the simplest of which is just add all of this together, which you can do with a uh, uh, function called sum in Excel, and then divide it by the total number of cells. So I've done that here. I've taken the sum of all of this, divided it by the number of cells, which is 238. Fairly simple to do. The second thing is standard deviation. So now what is standard deviation, right? Two words here, standard and deviation. Standard means average, right? Regular. And deviation means how far from the average of the entire data does it go? So how far does it move from 4,800? When I say it, I mean every single piece of this data. So what this program has done in the background is, it's taken all this data, the 7,100, 8,700, 12,400, seen how far does it move from the average, on average. So it's taken the average of the differences. What that gives me is instead of a single value for the average turnover, I get a range of the turnover. You have to know that HL is never going to get 4,800 crores in a row, right? In fact, there might not even be three consecutive or three total days where it has a total turnover of 4,800 crores. Because it will be large volume, it will be 4,800, then 4,950, someday it will be 5,200, someday it will be 3,600. And for all we know, they could all be within the average range. So with this standard deviation, we get range kya hai iska, jo acceptable hai. The range within which I don't think the volume is anything exceptional. And how do you calculate that? It's a simple formula. All you need to do is just type in STD and you'll get multiple functions that Excel gives you. For example, 
their std here and have multiple ways to calculate the standard deviation you can use any of them for this analysis and they'll work these different functions are used for what are called different distributions which we'll get to much later for now let's say i use the dot p function post that i'll simply select all my data so i take all the turnover just come and average nikala tha and i close the bracket press enter my value is here i notice it's the same value right i might not even have used the same formula though i have to regardless whatever formula you use the standard deviation might differ by very little in this particular case which is almost inconsequential to us now with these two values in hand now i can start thinking about how do i get the volume spike in so if on any day the turnover is greater and i'm only taking the case where it's greater because i'm looking at volume spikes volume kam hota hai usse mere hypothesis ko koi fark nahi pad raha my hypothesis is only concerned with volume spikes so i'm going to take wherever the data has gone beyond the sum of these two so average say which is 4800 crores about i expect that the data could go anywhere within the next 2240 crores because within this entire data that i found i've usually seen movement utne ke andar hi rehta that's what the program has done for me if it goes beyond that then i know that it's a volatility spike for example 5340 crores here is not a volatility spike because it's greater than the average but it's within the range that i expect on the other hand 12400 is way beyond the average range that i expect why do i know that because it's greater than the sum of these two so what you do intuitively with just in this analysis doing mathematically right now to actually execute in excel all we need is to simply use the if function in excel so i just type the words if and i get the function now within which it gives me all the details i need to put in the logical test i need what is the value if it's true and what is the value i want the function to give back if it's false so what i've done here in this case is i've taken h9 as my cell of reference here which is where the turnover is at so if this turnover in h9 is greater than the sum of these two that's exactly what we just discussed right if the turnover is greater than this sum then there's a volume spike and in that case i want the program to give me the value 1 now why am i taking 1 cuz in general positive is associated with 1 and negative result is associated with 0 in analysis cuz this is just a true or false statement right i just need to know if it's true or not true 1 false 0 that's why 1 or 0 you can assign any value you want here you can even put in functions here if you need for the simple analysis we're using 1 and that's what gives me my data here right now you know that if you just put in the data in one cell you can drag down to this corner box and you get the data or the function copied across the entire bunch so once that is executed here i get to see wherever i've had volume spikes in this entire year and at the very end what i can do is i can sum this so that's what i've done here i've taken the sum of all of this and since i've only assigned the value 1 to every volume spike the sum of this will give me the number of times we had a volume spike and that is 25 once again because i've only taken one as the value for a volume spike every time it happens the sum of all of these will give me the number of volume spikes we had out of these 238 circumstances so that's the first part done now i know how many volume spikes i had the last part that i need to calculate now is when was it that this volume spike was true to the hypothesis we have meaning if hl closed positive with a volume spike the next day was also positive or if hl closed negative with a volume spike the next day was also negative now how do we do that we use another if else statement the same thing once again so the first thing i need to check in this if else statement is that the volume spike is true because i'm executing it for all of them i need to make sure that the volume spike does hold true so if this value is 0 I always want zero here, meaning my hypothesis it's irrelevant for my hypothesis, right? So now the first thing in this if else statement would be if k nine equals one, k nine is or the k column is basically when I'm checking the volume spikes. So I only want this if else function to work when I have a volume spike because that's the basis of my hypothesis. Then if it is true, I have attached another if statement here, which will test what I really wanted to test, right? So if the first statement is true, if there is a volume spike. then it will test this entire if function if it, there is no volume spike it will just give me zero right forget about the internal function we'll talk about it in one second look at the broader if statement here if volume spike is true then you execute the internal function we'll talk about the internal function if volume spike is not true or zero return zero again right now let's look at the internal function right 
what we're doing here is a very cheeky mathematical trick here, right? So what I want to know is that the change was the same on both days. I don't need both to be positive. Both could also be negative. It could be that the first was positive, the second was negative. It could be that the first was negative, the second was positive. What I need to find out is were they the same? So now let's go back to very simple math, right? If you multiply two positive integers, you get a positive value, right? If you multiply two negative integers, you get a positive value. But if you multiply two integers or real numbers, pardon me, that have different signs, a positive and a negative, you get a negative number, right? What I want is, did they move in the same direction or was the percentage in the same direction, both negative or both positive? And that's what I'm using here. If I can multiply or divide the percentage change of the day we had a volume spike, so let's say if we pick this date, which is the 7th of May, row 12, we have a volume spike here and what I want to check is, did the change here, which is positive, when multiplied or divided with the next one, does that still give me a positive value? If it gives me a positive value, I know that the same change happened on both days, either positive or negative. So here, on one day, it moved positive 0.3% with a volume spike. On the next day, it moved 0.74% with a volume spike, which tells me that after this first volume spike, the second day was the same. My hypothesis is true, and I get one returned here. Similarly, on this day, on the 13th row or 10th May, we had a 0.74% change with a volume spike. And then the next day, we again have a positive number, which is 1.343. So again, we have the same direction, positive. So I again get a return of 1. But let's look at the next one. Here I had a 1.343% change, which is row 14, 11th May. And I had a volume spike. But the next day, I had a negative change. So the directions were different. Now, if I multiply or divide these two, I'll get a negative number, right? I just want you to focus on that right now. We'll get to the formula. If I get a negative number here, I should be able to get a zero in this case, right? So with this volume spike, I get a zero because the next day change was different. But if I now look at 15th row, 12th May, a negative change in the next day is also negative. We do have a volume spike here. Both days are negative. And in this case, again, the multiplication or division of both of these two would still be positive, right? So I should again get a 1. Which means if the multiplication product or the division uh, quotient gives me a positive value, I should get 1 here. Otherwise, I should get 0. And that's what I've done here. In the internal if function, I've simply added if i10 by i11. In this particular case, it's i10 by 11. In the next case, it would become 11 by 12. Basically, the value next to it divided by the value below it. So if this change, let's say i9 by i10, is greater than 0, meaning positive, give me 1 as the value. If this is less than 0, give me 0. Because if this is greater than 0, we have the same direction change. If this is less than 0, we have a different directional change. Because positive, 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 negative, 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 positive, negative, 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 positive. Simple math, right? And that's what I've executed here. Re go ahead and watch it again if this is confusing to you, or you can drop a comment, I will explain it again. But I'm sure that if you just watch it one more time, you'll understand. Now, once I have this value here, I can add all of this together, and that will give me the number of times out of the 25 volume spikes I had. Remember, the 25 volume spikes, because I've already qualified that at the beginning of the if statement. So out of the 25 volume spikes I had, how many times did HL stock price reflect my hypothesis? When was this true? And if I add them together, I get 16. You can notice the formula here. I've just summed the L row all together, right? That gives me 16. And that's basically the end of our analysis. All we need to do now is divide these two numbers and I'm going to get my probability. That's simple probability, right? The number of times it was true divided by the total number of cases gives me 0.64. Or 64% of the times, this hypothesis holds true. And if you are a trader, you know that any strategy that has a 65% success rate is a very profitable trading strategy. This will also help me decide stop losses, target prices, and everything else. So this is how quantitative analysis works in a very, very crude form. Just a disclaimer here, this is a very basic and very oversimplified way of conducting this analysis. There are many skills to develop here. There are optimization strategies and whatnot all of which I will talk about in due course of time. But if you do think that this is something you're interested in, just to make sure that I understand there is some motivation behind this, just drop a like or a comment so I know that you're interested, right? This is not an easy topic to talk about. So any 
feedback that you can give me is highly appreciated. Now, ending the video with a simple thought, don't think that quant is anything that you can't execute, right? Everyone can understand this. Everyone who's intelligent enough to work in the financial markets can master this analysis as well. And secondly, a human cannot do this. So we have 238 pieces of data here. And if I was to ask a human to conduct this analysis, it will take them days to do it. And you don't even work with such small amounts of data. Usually I'll be working with 2,500 pieces of data here, at least the last 10 years to get a credible answer. So we can't compete. Just as humans, we can't sit and compete with quantitative models. And that's why most of the quant funds are doing so well, because well, they can go through much more data much faster than anyone. So their response time is faster. All of that said, this is a very, very cool field. I am particularly in love with how this changes how I look at the markets, at least from the technical standpoint. All that said, if there's anything you didn't understand, drop a comment. I will explain it again there if you need. You can also just drop a like if you think I did a good job. I'll see you next time. Thank you.